Welcome back you guys to another Kingdom Hearts discussion video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my rankings of the Kingdom Hearts games from least favorite to my favorite. Now in preparation for Kingdom Hearts 3, I recently went through all the games again, had a lot of fun doing that, and I figured now sort of my be best and sort of last chance to put out this video with Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out in a few weeks. So here I am going and ranking these games. Now what goes into these rankings, the major factors that go into ranking the Kingdom Hearts game to me are story characters, gameplay, and presentation. So obviously some Kingdom Hearts games do it better than the others. And when I'm talking about these games, for games like Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, and Birth by Sleep, I'm talking about the Final Mix version, because obviously we can play those versions now because of the HD remasters. So sit back, relax, and I hope you all enjoy these rankings. At number 9 is Kingdom Hearts Coded. Now, I love Kingdom Hearts because of the story, but this game has easily the worst story out of any Kingdom Hearts game. This story is just a whole bunch of filler, a whole bunch of nonsense that means nothing. The game rehashes the same Disney worlds, same stories that we saw in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then they rehash the whole Castle Oblivion thing from Chain of Memories, and it's just so boring to watch the cutscenes and the story, all of it. Even though there are some moments where it is kind of fun with Data Sora and then going with Donald and Goofy and Mickey again, but most of this is just a boring filler-induced story. And like I said, that rehash they do of the worlds in this game is just makes it just really sort of painful to get through. Even though there are some good moments, like the whole thing with Nominate at the end when the story finally becomes relevant. Unfortunately, most of it is pretty boring. Even though the gameplay isn't all that bad, but the whole thing with the bug boxes gets old really fast. So all the elements come together to make the worst Kingdom Hearts game, in my opinion. At number 8, I have Kingdom Hearts Key and Kingdom Hearts Back Cover. Can't really talk about Union Cross because that story isn't really finished. But just talking about the original browser game, Kingdom Hearts Key, has a really sort of interesting story. The whole grand prequel setup to everything in the Kingdom Hearts story and all the lore they established. It's really interesting. The problem with this being a browser game, a mobile game, the story, the way it was sort of spread out, wasn't really all that great. And is actually kind of confusing when you go back and look at the story, even as one whole section. Interesting, but confusing. And like um, it being a mobile game, you can only get so much out of it. Uh, Kingdom Hearts back cover the movie. I, I initially really did not like because there were a whole lot of unanswered questions It did not answer but the movie itself judging it fairly did look beautiful with the whole unreal engine thing and had some great voice acting I mean, I love the master masters his personality in that he was a whole lot of fun So key the key saga had some interesting story going on But it being a mobile game you could only get so much out of it, which is why I've got it at number eight at number 7 is Kingdom Hearts 358 over 2 days. Now, I like this game a lot more than most people. And I think the thing that really sort of made the game for me was the characters. The way they showed the friendship between Roxas, Zion, and Axel. They were a great trio. I love the way they show how their friendship starts, how it goes on throughout all their days in Organization 13. All the drama that happens really makes this a story worth telling, in my opinion. And I appreciate the sadness the game had. I thought the gameplay, in terms of the whole way it's set up, you doing missions, it felt like you were doing a job in Organization. 13. So I know a lot of people didn't like the repetitive nature of this game, but to me it sort of helped with that feeling of you doing a job in Organization 13. And this was a sort of a solid Kingdom Hearts experience for what it was. Definitely not a great Kingdom Hearts game, but there were a whole lot of elements that made me really enjoy it. And I really wish this game got an HD remake, but looks like that's never going to happen because if you've seen that Kingdom Hearts Days remake that ever the YouTuber Everglow did, man, it looks spectacular. But it doesn't look like we'll ever get a full remake of Days. But the game on its own, I thought it was a decent experience for what it was. Next on the list is Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. Now, this is a tough one to rank just because it is a really short installment, but it is still an installment that counts towards the series, so you gotta rank it somewhere. And obviously, the big thing that stands out about this one is the presentation. It was our first time getting to play Kingdom Hearts gameplay with the Unreal Engine graphics, and it just looks fantastic. The way the levels are designed, the character models, all that stuff was really good. The gameplay was great. It was a return of Kingdom Hearts 2's command menu but combined with sort of the birth by sleep style, aqua style of fighting, all that stuff made for some really fun gameplay, the movement, all that stuff was really fun. And just sort of the way everything looked, the way the missions came together and sort of objectives, getting to do like obtain, customize aqua's clothes, that stuff was good as well. So all that stuff made for a good experience, but the problem was is that the story didn't really have a whole lot of substance, mainly because it was so sh short, didn't really get to see a whole lot of story substance. And also the big thing that you 
the reason why you can't rank it higher despite all those good aspects I mentioned is because it is sort of a short experience. So I can't really rank it above games that give you a more fuller Kingdom Hearts experience, even though this one real was really good. And that send-off you get at the end with Sora, Donald, and Goofy into Kingdom Hearts 3 is really good. So Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2 was a good experience, even though it was a short one. Next on the list is Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Now, I'm gonna be I'm talking specifically about Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, the PS2 version, just because I have not played the GBA version. So Rechain of Memories is the only version of Chain of Memories I've played. And speaking towards that version, I can say that most people can agree with this game that the story was really good, the character development for Sora, Donald, and Goofy, the whole thing with Sora being fucked with, and it felt like Sora was more mature in this game. This game told a really good story, as well as the villains in this one were really good. Marluxia. Larxene, Vexen, Zexion. These guys were different from the Xehanort vessels that we always get from as villains, because these guys were just assholes that just wanted to fuck with Sora and Riku. So that was really good. The thing that's obviously the most divisive about this game is the gameplay. A lot of people did not like the card system, but this card system just has sort of a one-off in the Kingdom Hearts card series. I thought it was actually really good and really rewarding the whole thing of you having to place your cards right using slates wisely uh, not wasting your cards playing your cards against the enemy the zero cards i think all that stuff was done really good in the system and really was sort of rewarding especially when you get to boss fights made for some really good boss fights that were challenging but rewarding if you could do them well so i thought the card system in this game which is obviously the thing that a lot of people did not like and the reason why people don't like to play Chain of memories I personally thought it was a pretty good system, and that combined with good story and villains made Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories a really good experience. And number four is Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Now, there's a whole lot to talk about when it comes to this game. The thing that I really that I like most about this game was the story. The story as sort of a setup to the Kingdom Hearts story and sort of showing Xehanort's origin, how everything sets up Sora's journey, this whole different story elements of Kingdom Hearts that are set up in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. That was really good. And I love the sort of sad nature of this game, of seeing Terra, Ven, and Aqua, sort of their friendship break down and sort of their sad endings. It gets me every time. It really is a sad ending. Sad but effective. Sad in a good way. So I really appreciate that and the way the game is divided into three different stories you seeing different things in Terraven and aqua stories and everything builds up to that final episode really good stuff the problem with this game in my opinion is the gameplay and i'm talking the gameplay specifically when it comes to boss battles i think the boss battles were just really poorly designed in this game the main reason why is because the, the command deck's not the problem with the boss battles the thing is these bosses when you hit them they're just they don't stagger, and staggering is something that is, is an important gameplay mechanic, especially what we saw in KH1 and 2. When your bosses don't stagger, it just feels like it's a bit of a mess, and you go back and play some of these boss battles, like Master Ericus, Xehanort, Terranord, or some of the secret bosses, the way they're designed, it's just horrible. I mean, go back and look at the young Xehanort mysterious boss in this game. It's just a whole bunch of dodge rolling, dodge rolling, and then Thunder Surge is all you can do to win that battle. And to me, that's just really bad boss design, as well as some of the other regular bosses that we see in this game, because the command deck is pretty fun when it comes to just going out and killing on burst in terms of boss battles kingdom hearts of birth by sleep was kind of lacking in that department and in that respect it's no cage one or definitely no cage two so unfortunately that makes me rank cage birth by sleep a little further down than i would like because i really appreciated the story but the gameplay was kind of lacking in certain boss battle aspects in my opinion at number three i've got kingdom hearts dream drop distance now this is a very polarizing game when in the kingdom hearts community in terms of what fans think about it some people love it some people hate it me personally i think it's probably the most underrated kingdom hearts game and the main reason i like this game or even kind of love this game so much is the gameplay the gameplay is just so much fun the introduction of flow motion and using it to just bounce and explore these big and i'm talking big worlds is so much fun talking about the level design in dream drop distance the best level design we've had in the kingdom hearts game so far and by far it's that good just because these worlds are so big and so many areas just so fun like traverse town the expansions they made the grid all that stuff country musketeers just some really fun worlds to explore in this game like i said that combined with the flow motion and how the command deck was done pretty well in this one made for some really fun gameplay the big reason why i think people 
think they don't like this game is the story. And I think people are confused when it comes to that because I don't think the story is the problem. The story setup of Sora, Don, Sora and Riku taking their mark of mastery exam and unlocking these sleeping keyholes, that's fine. I think people don't like the story when it comes to the plot points it introduced. And I personally don't like the plot points they introduce. That main one is time travel. When the time you get to the end and young Xehanort, Zigbar, and these other bad guys talking about the time travel they use to sort of change everything in the series, what you think of everything in the series, to me that plot point was really kind of lazy, really kind of confusing. It's just sort of like a, a bad use use of storytelling right there to sort of explain things because time travel just makes everything kind of confusing in my opinion. And even now, I'm still kind of confused exactly what was going on. But to me, that didn't really ruin the story experience of Dream Drop Distance. I loved how Riku got his time to sign at the end of the game. That was good. Some fun battles. And like I said, this had some of my favorite worlds in the Kingdom Hearts series. Like the what they did with Traverse Town, the world that never was in this one. Some really fun Disney worlds like Symphony of Sorcery was a masterpiece in my opinion. And I really like worlds like The Grid and Country of Musketeers also. So that made Dream Drop Distance probably the most underrated game in the Kingdom Hearts series for me. And one that I really, really appreciate. At number two is Kingdom Hearts 1, the original Kingdom Hearts game, and this game is old reliable just because everything is just simple and clean in this game. It tells a simple but good story of a little boy just trying to find his friends, and it's a really fun adventure, and I think the story is probably the best overall story in any Kingdom Hearts game just because it's not very convoluted. Like I said, simple story of trying to find Sora, trying to find Riku and Kyrie and joining with Donald and Goofy, all that stuff, and good use of, really good use of Disney in this game, sort of the best implementation of Disney when it comes to all the worlds being relevant, the whole thing of Maleficent and her team of villains chasing, using the darkness to accomplish their goals, the keyholes, all that stuff was really good, like how the climax builds in Hollow Bastion, I love Hollow Bastion, the design in this game, and how the climax then Ansem's revealed, really good storytelling in Kingdom Hearts 1. Now, the gameplay has obviously evolved a lot more since Kingdom Hearts 1. A lot of people think the gameplay in this one doesn't hold up. And it still holds up. It's just that we've gotten more sophisticated sophisticated combat since Kingdom Hearts 1. But this still works pretty well. It's still a fun experience. A lot of good levels and all that stuff. Even though there was some levels that were pretty bad. Like Monster, in my opinion. But all that stuff like the story, the storytelling... Uh, the adventure, the use of Disney made Kingdom Hearts 1 still one of the one of the second best overall Kingdom Hearts game in my opinion. And at number one, big surprise is Kingdom Hearts 2. This is most people's favorite Kingdom Hearts game, and it's definitely my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. Because there's just a magic to Kingdom Hearts 2 that is undeniable. You cannot resist the magic in this game. And that magic is that this is just a really fun adventure with so many fun characters. Going through all these worlds, they had the best selection of worlds. In this game, so much fun stuff like Mulan, Pirates, Steamboat Willie, Lion King, the Christmas Party, Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, all of this stuff was just so much fun to do and so many fun characters. It was just a great adventure with Sora, Donald, and Goofy that you just did not want to end. And talking about the gameplay, the gameplay in this game is definitely the best gameplay system they've had in the Kingdom Hearts game so far. It's so well balanced, but on harder difficulties, the way boss is designed and the use of all your abilities, so much great stuff. And it's definitely the best gameplay system it, they've had in the Kingdom Hearts game by far. And it's a shame that all these years later and all the installments later, they still have not been able to replicate a system that's as good as the system in Kingdom Hearts 2 with drive forms and all that stuff. But hopefully we get it in Kingdom Hearts 3, but so far Kingdom Hearts 2 has definitely had the best gameplay system in my opinion. The really amazing thing about Kingdom Hearts 2 is that it's been able to be the best Kingdom Hearts game despite having a major flaw when it came to the storytelling in this game. Because the story set up with Roxas Awakening and Sword on and Goofy going on this adventure to save the world again from Organization 13. All that stuff is fine, but it's just that the storytelling, there's a whole lot of filler, admittedly, when it comes to the Disney worlds, even though they were a lot of fun. A lot of them just were not very story relevant. Some of them were admittedly kind of bad, like Atlantica or even Agrabah in this game. But it just goes to show you that there was just so much fun adventure, so many great moments, like the Hollow Bastion Thousand Heartless Battle. 
Roxas's beginning, the ending with the world that never was, the party members you team up with, the combo attacks. Just a really fun adventure. And like I said, the magic in this game is undeniable to resist. Just a really fun adventure. And it's why I think a lot of people want Kingdom Hearts 3 so much, because they want another experience like Kingdom Hearts 2. So hopefully we get it with that game. But as for right now, Kingdom Hearts 2 is definitely the standard bearer, I think, for Kingdom Hearts games and the reason why we're all excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. So Kingdom Hearts 2, definitely my favorite Kingdom Hearts game so far. So that's it for this rankings video. It ran a little long, but there was a whole lot to talk about with these games. It was fun to talk about them. And at the time I'm recording this, only a few weeks left for Ke till Kingdom Hearts 3. I absolutely cannot wait. So excited. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and I will see y'all around with another one.